I'd like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Pete Hazen, who is Vice President of Data Center Solutions for Microchip. He, uh, in his role, he's responsible for storage, memory, and compute connectivity solutions, as well as SSD controllers for the next generation uh, data centers. Pete's got over 35 years of experience in silicon design, architecture, applications, engineering, marketing, business development, strategy, and management. He's worn a lot of hats. Uh, he's um, got a Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering from University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, go Badgers, if there's any uh, Wisconsin people in the audience. He holds over 20 patents in hardware and software. Let me introduce to you Pat Hazen. All righty. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, it's great to be here after a three-year hiatus uh, from all of us getting together face-to-face. -to -face. Uh, it's, it's been great uh, to be able to spend time together. You know, as we look back over the last couple years, uh, so many things have changed. We, uh, we work differently. We work from new places. And we're focused on some new problems. Uh, many of us have had dialogue over the last 18 months about our supply chain. Significant challenges at each of the links of that supply chain. And we continue to work on supply chain resi resiliency. Uh, we have a lot of work to do there overall. What hasn't changed is a focus on innovation. And what I want to do today is talk about some key areas of innovation in the data center infrastructure, which is the area that we focus on as an enabler and a partner here at Microchip. So before we jump into that, for those of you that are not yet familiar with Microchip, a quick introduction. Uh, Microchip has been around for over 30 years. Uh, we have over 21,000 employees. And our fiscal year ends every year in March. Our last one was $6.8 billion. So we have a large and diverse business that cuts across a diverse set of markets. And as you can see, we service industrial, data center and computing, automotive, communications, as well as aerospace and defense, uh, and consumer. And within our company, we're very focused on working together with the industry to enable smart, connected, and secure solutions. And we're focused on these areas that we refer to as the megatrends. These are those areas that are driving significant amount of innovation uh, that is also driving growth in the industry. And that includes 5G, IoT and edge computing, electrical vehicles, as well as autonomous driving, AI machine learning, and then, of course, data centers. And today, I want to focus in on data center innovation. So within the data center, we see a significant opportunity to improve efficiency and allocation of our precious storage, memory, and compute resources. This requires rapid innovation at multiple levels. We're very focused on enabling that innovation at the infrastructure level. So the first presentation I gave at Flash Memory Summit was a couple decades ago. It's been a while. I worked on the industry's first Flash Memory products, and then we came to Flash Memory Summit a number of years later, and we talked about solid-state drives, which was, while they had been around for a long time, they were going mainstream with the advent of NAND Flash Memory. And of course, we've seen today in the hallway and in presentations yesterday the amazing progress that we've made on the media level, in particular with flash memory. Uh, it is absolutely remarkable how far we've come. We've heard from the experts this week as to what those innovations are looking backwards and what the opportunity for continued media innovation is looking forward. In addition to flash memory, there's been an incredible amount of innovation on volatile memory as well, and hard disk drives. In those early years of the Flash Memory Summit, there was a lot of focus on hard disk drives. The 
innovation on the technology of that uh, uh, is also quite remarkable as very large hard disk drives remain an important part of our storage hierarchy uh, as we deploy our data center solutions. Also today, we find ourselves in a situation where we have more compute options than we've ever had before in terms of uh, platforms of CPUs, in terms of big data solutions using a variety of different GPUs, and that software spiral that runs on top of compute continues to solve new and exciting problems. At Microchip, as we work with our, our customer and ecosystem partners, we're focused at the nexus between the compute and the storage and memory. And so we're focused on delivering high performance connectivity that enables us to manage and secure the data uh, and to do so while maintaining full compatibility so that we can uh, build a very healthy ecosystem as we address the needs and opportunities of the data center. So today I want to touch on seven key areas of innovation in this space of data center infrastructure. Uh, the first of which is flexible architectures. This is a core philosophy for the solutions that we developed. It allows us to keep up with changing requirements, and it also allows us to configure common controller solutions for a variety of different deployments. AI ML capabilities, you know, as we look forward, this may very well be an area of advancement that will affect all of our lives in significant ways. In our world, we're focused on bringing that capability to our controllers in the form of an embedded engine that we can apply to solve some of the classical and new problems of developing data center solutions. Platform security may very well be the hottest topic over the last few years. Uh, the requirements are changing quickly, and it's important that we establish and continue to build that foundational trust and to address the ongoing threats. We'll touch on some of the work that's been done over the last few years. When we presented back three years ago at the Flash Memory Summit, we highlighted a solution that we've developed for fabrics as we move from hyper-converged solutions to disaggregated solutions. I'll share with you an update uh, and progress we've made in that area. Another key area of focus relates to what I refer to as the storage backbone. So as we develop our server architectures and we move forward with the new storage technologies, many of them diverse with different interfaces and different speeds, we need to build balanced system platforms that can comprehend that and, uh, and give us the highest performance to meet the, the needs of our applications. Of course, those of you that have been here know serial memory innovation is attracting a large amount of focus and investment. Uh, we've been working on this for the last four years, and I have an exciting announcement that we shared this week here. And then finally, in our industry, as we all know, standards-based solutions are a cornerstone of how we develop our solutions, and also developing the tools for these standards-based products is becoming increasingly important, especially as we introduce more complexity and higher speed solutions into the data center. So let's touch on each of these seven areas. <clears throat> First of which is flexible architectures. Uh, this diagram uh, shows two pictures, uh, our smart Raid on chip solution is shown on the upper part of the diagram here. This is a product that enables connectivity to 6, 12, 24 gig SAS, which is the foundational backbone for storage in our servers, as well as NVMe 1.0 and 2.x. <clears throat> this enables us to build a broad variety of solutions for hyperscale cloud as well as enterprise especially when we consider the mix of hard disk drive and solid state drive solutions. 
The diagram on the bottom shows our flash tech memory controller. And as you can see, we support the broad range of technologies and capabilities of NAND flash memory, including SLC, MLC. Uh, we have TLC, QLC, and 5 bits per cell, and provisions for next generation NVM. And developing solutions based on the latest NAND technology and keeping up with that rapid pace is incredibly important as we develop solid state drive solutions. And we work with our partners closely to be able to deploy common architectures that support multiple different capacity points and performance points and various different configurations. Again, a core philosophy, uh, certainly in, in all of the controllers that we build uh, for the data center. Uh, you can see that in the demo, we are showing our Gen 5 SSD controller. We're quite excited about that. Uh, we have live silicon, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to take a look, please stop by. and We'd love to talk to you about that. AI and ML, uh, again, just an area of incredibly rapid innovation. We're very pragmatic and focused as to how can we leverage this capability within our controllers. And what we've done is we've integrated this engine into our flash tech memory controllers with an application agnostic interface that enables us to use the capability of AI ML for a variety of different functions including computational storage. By moving computations away from the CPU, we become more efficient, both from a computing cycle and networking standpoint. Also NAND management, uh, which is a continuation of, of uh, science and art as we learn to manage the new media that our media partners are bringing us. Improved performance. We can monitor the characteristics of I.O. and use that to our advantage as we optimize the performance of the solid state drive, as well as quality of service. So over time, you know, the, the, the latencies uh, involved in the device and maintaining uh, an important quality of service. And then, as well as a number of others. <clears throat> what I wanted to do is just take a minute as an example and talk about just a classic problem uh, in developing solid state drives that we've been working on for decades and we continue to innovate. And this is around NAND management. So as we know, as we uh, proceed to newer technologies of NAND, the number of bit errors continues to go up. Those bit errors are a function of a variety of different characteristics, one of which is the number of program and array cycles we put on the device. So this graph shows the NAND bit error rate versus PE cycles increasing over time. And of course, in our controller, we enable resources to allow for error correction, which corrects those errors up to a limit, which we refer to as the Shannon limit. As we apply AI ML, we're able to reduce the number of errors at a given number of program and array cycles, which effects, effectively extends the life of the media. How do we do that? We do that by using the data and structures of the AI ML engine to be able to precisely locate the, the um, moving read reference capability in the device itself. So this is just one example. We have a proof of concept that shows how machine learning can be used to improve error correction in, in conjunction with the ECC algorithms. So we're quite excited about this. This is an area of focus for us and in innovation as we work with our partners that develop their, their full solution. Next, I want to take a minute and talk about platform security. Uh, this has been an area that we've spent a considerable amount of time with our design partners and with our end users to comprehend the needs of security in the data center. A number of years ago, uh, platform security was really just about having a secure boot capability at the component level. And then the platform firmware security standard came out and outlined a new set of requirements to protect, detect, and recover at 
the platform level. And so now systems must provide attestation, both at the component level as well as at the platform level. Uh, data centers are now requesting runtime monitoring uh, so that, for example, if the spy flash component is tampered with or changed, we can alert the operating system real time and make sure that uh, damage uh, is not done to the system. Uh, platform attestation in general, make sure that all the components are secured and we know where they come from along with the firmware. Lifecycle management is also very important and requires a comprehensive approach from raw materials through manufacturing of the devices to the complete solution, storage of the keys, production, all the way through failure analysis. So when a component is returned, those secrets are, are treated uh, in a secure way. Uh, and then finally through end of life. So this framework helps us to innovate along with our partners to develop security solutions uh, as the requirements continue to evolve. And on the right side of the diagram here, you see, uh, you see a picture of an OCP block diagram. Uh, this is uh, our data center security control module. We've developed a specific component we refer to as a trust shield that implements this architecture I've described and enables uh, an agnostic solution uh, across the variety of platforms that we deploy in the data center. Uh, a very important area of focus. Uh, again, we are demonstrating uh, this particular trust shield in our, in our uh, booth. If you haven't had a chance to see it, please, please come. We have our architect uh, for this solution here and would love to talk to you about it. Beyond security, uh, we have the topic that we have been working on for a number of years related to switch fabrics, an area of continuous innovation. So with this, we have a, we focus on increasing the storage GPU and NIC utilization, uh, where we find ourselves consuming you know, large amounts of data uh, at a faster rate. So in a classic hyperconverged architecture, we have a specific configuration of compute, storage, and memory that's optimized for the most rigorous workload in that particular server. In reality, we, we run many workloads, and so when we have medium or smaller workloads, we end up with these precious resources being stranded and underutilized. And so, as an industry, we've been focused on moving to a disaggregated solution. And connectivity of resources becomes a critical area of innovation here. We need a switched fabric. And so we've developed one based on standard PCIe. The PCIe protocol has some restrictions and makes it difficult to share and connect all these disaggregated solutions. And so we've innovated on top of that to enable peer-to-peer -peer transfers across different host domains and across the CPU, GPUs within a given domain. Now this is an area that we're, we have a production solution on our Gen 4 products, and on our Gen 5 switch, we continue to innovate. So, for example, as we move to higher speeds, the ability to debug these very high-speed, complex, high lane count devices becomes increasingly important. And so, we've now built in an analyzer for each lane in the PCIe switch. This allows us to debug and troubleshoot issues without system disruptions. And, it, and it's a capability that solves a number of the challenges that we have with, with traditional analyzers. So we're quite excited about that capability. We think that's key in order for us to harness uh, the new capability and will enable us to build upon our, our switch fabric solutions as we go forward. Next, I want to talk about the storage backbone. So this diagram shows a simple server architecture of compute, 
connected to a diverse set of storage, hard disk drives and solid state drives. And in between, we have the backbone consisting of a controller connected to an expander. In this particular example, we show a Gen 4 interface to the CPU and a collection of drives that are aggregated up through the backbone. And as highlighted here, we see that we end up with a bottleneck uh, in terms of bandwidth. And so how do we address that? We address that really in two ways. First of which is to upgrade to the next generation of SAS, 24 gigabit per second. And we also provide a capability we refer to as dynamic channel multiplexing. And this is a protocol innovation that allows us to interleave multiple different speeds and interfaces of storage such that we have 100% utilization of that storage backbone. This gives us a balanced system architecture and allows us to take full advantage of the high performance commute, compute as well as uh, the, the dis, uh, dissimilar storage solutions that we have. Uh, we're demonstrating our SAS4 expander. Uh, we're quite excited about this. We'll bring this to production and working with our partners uh, as we uh, develop the next generation servers for the data center. So let's take a moment uh, to talk about serial memory. Uh, three years ago, we were here and we announced our first serial memory controller. It had open memory interface, has open memory inter interface on the host side, connects to DDR4. This production has been ramping in volume. We're quite excited uh, and have learned a ton about our early investment in this area. Serial memory interfaces gives us increased bandwidth because we have more channels. It presents the opportunity for media independence because we can use the standard interface to the host across multiple media. And it also enables lower solution costs because we can reduce the pin count on the compute CPUs and GPUs, uh, which helps to reduce cost. And we can also utilize previous generation memory behind the interface. So we're quite proud of the team to be recognized for an innovative award. And we're quite excited this week about our new announcement that we just made yesterday. Over the past couple years, we've been busy working on our next generation controller based on Compute Express Link. And this is a good example of technology, or I should say a standard, that didn't exist last time we all got together. So now what we're introducing uh, is our Compute Express Link Smart Memory Controller. This provides a by 8 CXL link up to the host, and it's the industry's first by 16 CXL channel device that connects to both DDR4 and DDR5. We provide quality of service and error correction capability in this device. And we're excited, working closely with our partners to enable the, the core value proposition of this, this new market that is growing rapidly uh, around serial memory. So we have the component here. If you come by our booth, we also have the reference uh, board that we provide uh, to be able to um, learn and, and grow and, and apply this new technology to our server designs. Okay, the last key point of innovation I wanted to touch on has to do with standards-based solutions and tools. So, of course, standards are an important part of all of our business and efforts, and as, as many of you who are involved know, it takes an enormous amount of effort to advance together the technologies and associated standards. We're also very focused on enabling the tools that allow us to bring these standards-based solutions to market. 
and we're committed uh, to, to have world-class tools. We, um, what I'm highlighting here is our microchip chip link tool. So what we provide here is uh, a live assessment of link quality and signal integrity. And this enables debug and link optimization for devices that are development and in the field. So it allows connection into live data uh, and you can see the signal integrity diagram on the upper right. It also includes all of our characterization data across all of the corners of the technology. And it's used by the board designers and developers to optimize channels to be used in these high-speed uh, applications. On the bottom, you see a diagram that shows protocol. Again, this is acting as the interface to our on-chip analyzer that I mentioned before. We're quite excited about this. This is a full analyzer-capable uh, um, device with an interface through this particular tool. And again, very important as we, we build these high-speed platforms. Uh, and then finally, we spend a lot of time focusing on reference designs. We're committed to make sure the components that we build across microchip work together, full compatibility, and also that we comprehend the needs of the next generation data center so that we can develop the next generation of product and, uh, and provide reference designs to pull those together. So we talked about seven different key areas of innovation that we're highlighting this week. Uh, again, I really look forward to spending more time talking to you about that. Uh, we've had a lot of meetings this week. Um, really excited about the opportunities that we have going forward. If you haven't had a chance, please stop by our booth. And um, you know, looking forward to that. Again, we've got demonstrations of each of those key technology areas that I highlighted. So once again, great to be back together. I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to our road ahead together. Thank you.